Go. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Eternal Midnight. And I am Santino. And we are here with Chad, Erica, and Kevin again for our special midweek episode. How are you going? How are you doing, guys? Pretty good. Good. I'm right. good. That's right. Great. So for the for today, our special midweek episode, what we're gonna do is basically we're gonna delve in a bit to the main cast of the HP. I mean, like not, not the act, actors and actresses, but the the characters themselves. We're just gonna give our own opinions and hopefully share our thoughts on what these characters mean to us and who we like and do not like, or and what we think what we learn from them, basically, from the entire HP saga. So, yeah. without further ado, let's get into it. Um, the Golden Trio. We're going to start with the, the main trio first. Uh, first first of all, the man whose name is on every book, Harry Potter himself. What do you guys think of him as a character? Uh, Kevin, you go first. Um, I think he is actually probably my favorite character out of any fiction ever, because, like, he has to go through a lot of stuff like like in the books I felt I could really connect to them cuz he had so much frustration from others but like you know he he just uh you know he's just going through a lot of pressure like with school and like you know with uh Voldemort and so much other stuff so that's what I really liked about Harry Potter is just like he feels like no one understands him but like sometimes you know he feels like he can be wrong on that mm. Yeah, <clears throat> I think that he, um, I, I like Harry a lot. Um, one, one thing that I really like about him is his sass. He is so sassy and it's amazing. Um, and he, he's a very, he's a very interesting character in that like he, he came into this world knowing nothing and he kind of had to build who he was. And uh, I really like his relationship with Ron and Hermione I love their friendship I love all that all those things and I you know I think I think it makes complete sense how angry he was at certain points and uh you know he, he's been through a lot and uh Harry is a really great character and uh I I like him uh how about you Chad uh any words he definitely is a great character I mean it, it, as opposed to something like, you know, one of the Marvel movies where we're seeing these characters who start off as adults. We're seeing the story of a boy from age 11 to 17 and progressing through adolescence, um, learning and changing as he's going through school, going through some of the most terrifying things a human being could go through and still seeing him come out on top on the end and not like have given up or just become a broken human being out of it. So definitely a great arc from beginning to end, I thought. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I agree. Cause like he's the, we're, we're seeing the wizarding world through his eyes. I mean, like in the books, we know how he feels. And I think that's what makes Harry such a great character is because um, w w whatever happens, it affects him in certain ways. Like that scene at the end of Order of the Phoenix where he fights Dumbledore and Dumbledore, and he's like throwing, in the book, he's like throwing things around his, the office where he's like breaking stuff because he's so angry. He's angry at everything that he's lost and he keeps on losing things. And yeah. I like the fact that he looks, he he's really a true Gryffindor. You know, he looks death in the eye and he's willing, like he could have said, you know, I, screw this, <clears> I'm not <throat> the prophecy. I'm not the chosen one, like find someone else. But, he faced Voldemort. He faced his parents' murder. He faced what he had to do. And I'm glad that at the end, he finally found peace. He finally found peace. He finally found happiness. He finally found a family. So it, it, it's so amazing to see his growth from this boy who was who grew up in a household that, is, that was in a way abusive to a guy who was so confident and was able to face down the greatest evil ever in the wizarding world. So, yeah, I like I like Harry's growth and development. So now, uh, Ron Ronald Weasley, the main Weasley boy through that entire story. The love uh, of my life. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Kevin, how about you go first, man? What are your opinions on Ron? You've been kind of quiet on him for the like, you know, the, the um, past um, reviews. Well, <laughs> not, not kind of quiet. I mean, like you've said stuff, but like. 
what's your opinion on the guy as a whole? I, I really, like, I got to say, Ron, like, I may not, like, talk about him much, but, man, do I feel bad for not talking much about him. Because, like, he's just, like, the perfect friend almost. Like, he's very supportive of Harry. Like, you know, they have their arguments and all that. But, like, you know, he he's always there for his friends. Like, that's what I really like about Ron. And, you know, he does have his problems. He has, like, his insecurities. He feels like he, like, uh, you know, can't top the other Weasleys because, like, uh, you know, the there are the twins, there's Percy, there's Charlie, and there's Bill. So, like, what's he got to offer? So he has to face this so much pressure from his family because, like, you know, many of them have done their own things and been very successful. So that's what I like about Ron. That's very really good. That's a very good That's a very good analysis. How about you, Chad? Your opinions on Ron? Ron is a very underrated character. Um, I mean, obviously, he's gonna be in harry's shadow no matter what because harry's famous for what he went through and ron isn't but at the same time um no he's got the character has a ton to offer and i think one of the biggest things to me at least whenever i see stuff related to harry potter that's like being advertised talked about ron's always listed after hermione and it's like he was harry's first friend he was there long before hermione was and it's like, I wish Ron would get more of the recognition that it feels like he deserves because it just feels like he's always just shoved off to the side because it's like, we have the main character who's Harry, who's a boy, then we have the girl, and then Ron is just thrown in there. So yeah. it's like, I think he deserves more, he deserves more recognition for who he is. Yeah. Yeah. Good character. This is you, go off. Shoot. <laughs> Ronald Billy as Weasley is my favorite character in the entire series. I uh, I fell in love with him in um, when I read um, Prisoner of Azkaban when he stood up on his broken leg and uh, told Sirius Black that if he wants to kill Harry, they'll have to kill he'll have to kill them too. Um, he he's so brave and protective, and he. You know, he has a temper, but his temper, his temper roots down to protecting those that he loves. He would never just be like, oh, I had a bad day. I'm going to punch someone. It'd be like, oh, you insulted the woman I'm in love with. I'm going to punch you now, you know? <laughs> and violence isn't great in general, but I think the root of your violence is where it matters the most. Um, I love how loyal he is. I love how... Even if you're in an argument, if, if, if that person needs you, you'll be there. And I love how much character growth he goes through. Like from, from Philosopher's Stone down to Deathly Hollows, he just, he grows and matures so much and he learns from his mistakes. And I think, you know, I think there's cer definitely certain parts where he's like a stupid teenager, but that's literally because they're stupid teenagers. They do stupid teenager things. Um, and... I love how protective he is, like I said, loyal protectiveness, and I, I think that he, him being so insecure makes a lot of sense, living in his brother's shadows, not being, not being the girl, um, and, you know, always kind of, he was always kind of the, he was never number one, I guess, is the way to say it, and so, and, and I, I think, one moment that always stands out to me is the In Order of the Phoenix with the whole uh, Weasley is Our King song yeah. that the stupid ferret did. We'll, we'll discuss the ferret later. I have a lot of opinions on that. But, um, <laughs> like, I've heard people say one of the reasons why they don't like Ron is because he's so insecure. And I'm like, well, if you are humiliated continually for a whole year at school in front yeah, of the entire did. school... How would you be? I'd be pretty insecure and feel pretty like like I, I I just hate people who don't go and actually see what why he's insecure and like everyone's insecure. So yeah, uh, yeah. Ron is my favorite character and the fandom puts him down a fair bit and it bothers me because all the people that not all the people but some people that put him down don't actually take the time to delve into his character. Yes, true. Uh, for me, uh, Ron, Ron really was my favorite character from the beginning when I read the Harry Potter books when I was young because 
he's he's us. He's the guy. He's he's um everyone at one point in their life felt insecure about something, whether it be fa- um being with family members or uh, um being or friends being better at some things, and you're not. I really feel like that Ron had really was beside despite his insecurities, he was still so loyal to Harry and Hermione. Like he never he never faltered in that. He he never questioned their friendship. I mean, yeah, you had you had his lapses of like when when the jealousy became too much sometimes, like uh, in year uh, year four where uh, Harry had yeah, yeah. Harry had the had the tasks and Hermione had Crumb, but he always the, the what I think his defining character is he always comes back. He always goes back to his friends. He always remains loyal. Like even when the Horcrux, a literal, a literal piece of Voldemort's soul, was torturing him. He came back to help his friend. Yeah. And I think one of the, the I, I, one of the, the, the climax for his character, in my opinion, was when uh, Harry opens the locket and all of his insecurities are there, and he brings on the sword. That's a symbol, you know. That's him letting go. Of his yeah, that's his, that's his, that's the defining moment. And that's, it shows us how insecure he was. And then he, he goes and destroys it. And he, it, it's, yeah, I, I was bawling my eyes out in that chapter. And then like, literally, I, I couldn't stop crying. I had to call one of my friends. And it was like, when I read that, I think it might have been at like, 2am in the morning. And I was just like, <laughs> Yeah. Here's Voldemort's soul. Like he's he's torturing this poor kid like with every single fear. That's that's happening. So I really felt like man, this guy is so he's so strong. Like that you know like when you have yeah. that stuff face you like usually you would run away but no, the guy the guy brought down the sword. That to me yeah. that's the biggest form of courage ever. So yeah. Be- Ron's insecurities. Why don't we move on to Hermione? Okay. Uh, Hermione. You, uh, Kevin, first. Your opinion on Hermione? Um, I really like Hermione in the in the books. You know, like, look, like, uh, I gotta say she was, I will say it was kind of, like, funny, like, uh, between her and Ron's, like, uh, interactions. I thought those were usually the most fun and where I generally made the most feelings out of them like, especially when they're arguing, and, like, as, I also kind of related to, like, um, you know, her, like, insecurities and, like, sensitivities, because, like, she can be pretty sensitive, like, while she is pretty brilliant, like, she does have, uh, you know, some struggles and issues as well, especially in the Hapled Prince when, uh, you know, like, when Ron went out with someone else, you know, she was, uh, she She was, like, like, she was very saddened by that. Yeah. No, like, not just sad. She was really salty, too. She was, like... And salty, yeah. She she literally sent, like, a pack of canaries to go after Ron just because he, he dated another girl. She sent a bunch of birds. <laughs> Chad, you? Uh, she was a good character. I really, truly enjoyed her. I liked her better in the books because, like we've discussed in the movies, they kind of really glossed over a lot of faults that she had that was, like, her counterbalance where she had really strong strengths but she also had areas where she faltered they kind of did away with a lot of those in the movies so book Hermione is far better but movie wise I I mean she's still a good character she's supportive she's smart she's quick thinking she's the one who anytime shit seems like it's about to collapse she's there to use her use her brain or knowledge to suddenly boom think of something on the spot very good very good strong supporting character in my opinion yeah. I, I mean, yeah, no, we'll, we'll go into something else on her later, but <laughs> because it's something you and I disagree on. Which, which is mm-hmm. our, okay. what yeah. we talked about last night. <laughs> oh, what relationships. What? Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> uh, how about you? How about how about uh, you, Erica? Your opinion, opinions on Hermione? I like Hermione. Um, I think the movies destroyed her, and I have I have a I have a big opinion here in regards to being a girl in that, um, you know, 
Hermione, Hermione is a very emotional character. She, she cries very easily. She's not good at like knowing when to like not when to shut up. Like I know that sounds a little harsh, but like she, she's very bossy, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. But she, she's very like planning everything. Needs to do this. Needs to do that. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I think um, Hermione and Ron work so well is that Ron is like the only person that can be like, hey, no, I don't want to do it that way, you know? So my whole thing with movie Hermione is that um, it, they, they, turned you, they turned you into another perfect character that girls have no, that little girls ha- can't be, you know, I, I at me at 12 years old, I had like big, poofy, brown, frizzy hair and a mouthful of braces. Seeing a character that looked like that would have made me feel so much better. And I will never forgive them for getting rid of her poofy hair. I mean, I mean, Emma Watson's pretty. They can't do anything about that, but they could have easily given her poofy, curly hair. And I will never, that's, that's one of the things that I hate because like each of them, each of the golden trio has their own defining like appearance thing. You know, Harry, it's the scar and the glasses. Ron, it's the being tall and having the red hair. And Hermione, it's the big bushy hair. Um, and I, I love Hermione. I think she's a great role model for young girls. But I also, I think the fandom over glorifies her a little bit. Definitely. And thinks that she's perfect. She can do it all. She's the mega... Make a make a perfect character, but it's like I think what makes her so perfect. I don't think she's perfect. I think what makes her so such a great role model is the fact that she has those flaws. She's a real person. She's a real girl. She has these emotions, and it makes sense. And I just hate what they did to her in the movies. So yeah, true. My opinion of Hermione is uh, she's very much again like what you guys said. She really has. Her fair share of flaws. I think one of the biggest ones, in my opinion, was in Prisoner of Azkaban, where she didn't want to admit that Crookshanks ate Scabbers. I mean, it was literally framed that, I mean, it didn't happen, but it was framed to be that way. And everyone said, you know, just apologize to him. And Hermione was so proud that she didn't want to apologize to Ron at all. Just like, And it was only when they stopped talking that she really finally, you know, admitted that she was, it wasn't her fault because it was her cat. You know, she was supposed to control it, right? So, yeah. I think, in my opinion, that Hermione is over-glorified, and it's not really Emma Watson's fault. I think it's, again, you know, the scriptwriter's fault, and I don't want to get into that anymore, but I really yeah. think I really think that the scriptwriter script wanted to over-glorify and play favorites with Hermione, and it sucks that, it sucks that, um, it sucks that, it, it sucks that that happened, because, um... Emma Watson's great, and I, I, she's still like my number one crush for sure. But the problem is like, um, you have to give everyone their shine, and yeah, that that ninety percent of what Ron's lines were and Ron's supportiveness she, they gave to Hermione, and Ron was given was put in the background, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What do you, What do you guys think of uh, Neville? I I really like Neville. Neville? Okay, let's yeah. move on to Neville. So ne- Neville. Neville, uh, you go, you go, Kevin first. Um, you know, like I like it how in the books, you know, he started like kind of like um, uh, kind of like a loser almost. Like, sorry if that sounds harsh, but you know, like, no, it's true. <laughs> people were just like, they usually never really took him seriously that much, you know, because like he could forget stuff, he could be very clumsy. But then, like, as the book starts to progress, like, like mostly, I think I started noticing the change in the Order of the Phoenix. He yeah. really started to be more of a dynamic character, especially when we learned of his, like, backstory with his uh, parents. Like how, uh, you know, like, they got tortured and all that by Death Eaters. And, you know, Neville has had to live with his grandmother. And I really liked it how he did not want to talk about it that much because, you know, he wasn't ready to, you know, like, you know, be in the spotlight, you know? Yeah. It was yeah. kind of like a kind of like a similar similar parallel to Harry almost especially since we later find out that he could have been the other chosen one yeah, yeah. 
I I like Neville. Neville is I find him to be a mix between like a squishy teddy bear and a brave knight, if that makes sense. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um he I yeah, he was he was definitely seen he was definitely written as like the loser character in the beginning of the series. And um Order of the Phoenix was his movie. That was his movie. You know, he that's also when isn't that when he got a new wand or something too? I think that was when he got a new wand. Yeah. He he got a new wand at some point in the books and that was one of the reasons is because he he had been using his dad's old wand. So now he actually had a wand that chose him. So I think that's one of the reasons why he got better at magic. Um, and Order of the Phoenix was his movie. He he learned a lot from Harry and the DA, and he was badass at um, at the Department of Mysteries battle. Um, and I I love that they ended it with with him having that glorified moment of killing the snake. And I think that. I love that J.K. Rowling, I love how she ended his character. Like, I loved him in Deathly Hallows, the fact that he took over the DA and kind of he became this awesome, awesome character. And and uh, I think he, yeah, I love Neville. He's great. I don't, yeah. How about you, Chad? Opinion on Neville? Neville is a really good supporting character. Um, I think if I could have one wish, give me a, give me a parallel series of books all of it but told from his point of view i think that would be an amazing read out of all the characters i'd love to see it because it's like he gets so much development but you see it only when it happens we don't we don't know how he's getting to that development aside from just being told like you know he joined da and worked hard what what was going through his mind while he was doing all this Uh, what's what's his whole thought process on voldemort coming back with the knowledge he has of what happened to his parents, his personal grudge against uh, Bellatrix, probably. I think it would be awesome to read a book series of the whole Harry Potter story, but from Neville's point of view. Because I think he's a really, while he's there, he still feels majorly underdeveloped for what they could have done with him. Yeah. There's probably a fan fiction of that somewhere on the internet. Well, <laughs> I'm sure that is That is the dark part of the internet I avoid. <laughs> I'm sure it's one of those. I, in my opinion, I think Neville, I like the fact that he really, like, at the beginning of the book series, like, he's just really this goofy guy. Like, that's so clumsy. Like, and, and even, like, he's made jokes about it by the teachers. It's like, uh, in Chamber of Secrets, where he faints from the mandrakes and sprouts, like, and I just leave him there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I like the fact that I, what I always remember from Order of the Phoenix is that hospital scene where, where you learn that basically Neville has, has a dark past, you know, like, Neville, this guy who's so clumsy and so sweet, has this dark past of his parents tortured to insanity. Like that scene yeah. where mom gives her the gives him the candy wrapper and it's like and it's like uh, oh. and he has to like say thanks mom because like the mom's just so addled from brain damage that it's Yeah, that was that was so smushy and just like it that made me cry too. I I cried a lot in Order of the Phoenix. There's just Order of the Phoenix is my second favorite book, and I, I don't understand why so many people hate it, but um, yeah, I'm, Neville, Neville's awesome, and um, yeah. What, what about uh, how does everyone feel wait, about Luna? Wait, in my wait before we go to Luna, in my opinion, I with Neville, I stand by the fact that I agree with Chad. He should have killed Beldrix, not Molly. In my opinion, mm. yeah, Beldrix. He died. deserved he deserved his closure revenge. Yeah. Uh, or not even revenge, we'll call it. More of avenging what happened to his parents because Neville doesn't seem like the type who would get revenge. Like, he doesn't... That's what I mean. It's, like, short of exploring it in another st- way of telling this, he doesn't seem like the type who wants revenge or he doesn't seem like the type who, really like, has a dark side that he's, like, containing within himself. Yeah. Do you guys think that Neville should have gotten revenge, or you, were you fine with not Molly get, getting the last shot? Well, I think I think both. I, I'm kind of in the middle there because I think there's there's both sides, but I, I don't know. I really like that line with Molly, and I liked the fact that she said like, "You will never touch our family or our children again." Um, and I think I think after 
yeah that's my opinion um but we should uh talk about we luna we should move to luna uh luna your opinions on luna kevin I don't know. Like, I always like how weird she is. Yes. Like, I just don't know why, but she's just one of the, like, most interesting characters ever. Like, her lines and, like, her dialogue is just, I don't know why. She's just very memorable for me every time. Like, both books and films. Like, like whenever she appears, I always remember her. Yeah. She's really memorable. Yeah. I... I really like <clears throat> I really like Luna. Um, she's very quirky, and I've always I've always identified and felt like I'm a quirky person. So I really liked seeing someone like that. Um, and she's so she's she's a very peaceful person, and she she just says what's in her head, and I, I really like that a lot. Um, and I think that she she's a really good friend. She's a really good friend to Harry, and she you know. One thing I like about her, she doesn't let other people's opinions affect who she is or how she feels about herself. She's she's very just like herself and okay with that, you know. Uh, like she, she's fine with it being weird and she doesn't give yeah. a damn what everyone else thinks about it. She's she's in her own space and she doesn't worry so much about other people, you <laughs> know. Yeah. Um. How about you, Chad? Opinions on Luna? They picked a really good actress for her in the movie. No doubt about that. What I liked about her character was she always had that, like, younger sister tagging along type of feel to her. Yeah. And I thought it worked really well because it's, like, there probably could have been people who were, like, you know, oh, you know, her and Harry, maybe they had chemistry or something. No, it's she yeah. always, to me, in the movies and in the books, she had that younger sister tagging along with the older siblings thing going on with her. And like that, she was independent. She did her own thing. She didn't care what other people thought of her. So definitely a really good, another really good underrated character, I think. Yep, true. Uh, I think Luna, in my opinion, is very much a girl who is very okay with herself. You know, she doesn't give a damn about how, she doesn't give a damn about who, um, what, what anyone else thinks. Like She's fine with being weird, with being quirky. I like the fact that she comes into her own, like she's, she survives the war and she grows a lot and th that's amazing for her. Am I, I forget, a... did she and did she and Neville wind up together? Uh no no no, that never happens in the book. She okay. ended up Duke Scamander's great great grandson. Yeah. Yeah, oh, she Yeah, and uh, Neville married Hannah Abbott. <laughs> this bartender like who owns I don't I I forget what Which she wasn't even in the movies. Yeah, he wasn't even in the movies. Again, no, she's in the movies, but only a few times. Like, just brief. Mm, I see. Okay, uh, Ginny. Uh, how, how, how do you feel about Ginny? Uh, real, real quick. Uh, Kevin, you go first. Um, I really like Ginny in the books. Uh, like, you know, like she starts off uh, in the first book and then in the second, like, kind of like a... Well, mo well I mostly noticed this in the second book, but, like, she is, like, very shy, especially, like, around Harry. And, like, I do like it how, uh, you know, as the books continue to progress, she begins, we begin to see her personality. And, like, soon, like, especially in the, like, Half-Blood Prince, like, we see how she's very outgoing, extroverted, and, like, you know, a very powerful witch. So I thought that was really cool to see her character like that. So, yeah, she's she's a pretty cool character. Um, how about how about you, Erica? I like Ginny. Yeah, I like her a lot. I like that she's kind of like this um, sort of badass, awesome kind of. I, I think she's a really great female role model um, for younger kids, and um, I like that she's this. She's she, she's a jock. She's uh, she says what she says, and she doesn't apologize for it. I think that she was a little bit. She was kind of mean to Ron at times. Yeah, I agree. Um, and then people go and argue like, oh, she Ron was so mean to her. And it was like, he wasn't mean to her. He was protective. He might have said things that weren't the kindest, but literally Ginny says quite a few mean things to Ron as well as, you know, characters like uh, Fred and George do. Um, 
Uh, I like her a lot. I like her friendship with Luna. I like that she kind of defends Luna quite a bit. Um, and I, yeah, we, yeah, the only, the only thing I, I, I think I mentioned this in the Deathly Hallows um, podcast, but I, I wish that she would have had a little moment with Harry at the end of Deathly Hallows. That would have been nice to see. Mm-hmm. Uh, how yeah. you I- she was good in the books. They definitely gave her a good um, growing arc, being the youngest of God knows how many siblings, but still being able to like leave her own legacy behind. I thought was really good. Um, yeah, she built her she built her own character, which I really enjoyed, and the way she was in the books was really good. But in the films, I just I mean, she was literally in the films. She was just there to get married to Harry because that's what she did in the books. I mean, their relationship was awful. So, yeah, book Jenny, good. Movie Jenny, ugh, it, almost <laughs> no opinion because she didn't do any. She didn't do much. Yeah. Uh, in my opinion, I agree with Chad. Book Jenny, good. Movie Jenny, bad. Uh, I like her progression from basically being Harry Potter fan girl to being her own person and. And really having a lot of sass and and fire to her personality. I do agree with Erica though. She was kind of mean to Ron, and doesn't it didn't make sense for her to do to say some of the stuff that she did. But overall, I do I think people uh, um um disagree with Harry marrying Janine. No, nah, I, I like it. I like the fact that they got married and they were able to um do they were able to um have. Uh, a relationship because she's feisty and Harry likes that. You know, Harry likes that kind of woman. But H- Harry was never into Hermione because that, that that never matched his personality. Ginny matched Harry's personality way more than Hermione did. So yeah. Yeah, awesome. Harry and Hermione make no sense to me. Like literally, he she's too emotional. Like in so many situations in the books, she, there's literally like all these moments where she's crying or. Or she's being all emotional and Harry's like, he's not sure how to comfort her or what to do. And so it's like, and then all of these times when that starts, literally Ron comes and comforts her immediately. Yeah. And um, she, yeah. Harry and Hermione, they never, ever would have worked out together. At least, at least in the, in the books. If anything, I think if Harry was going to end up with any of the golden trio, it, it, there's more proof for him to have a crush on Ron, <laughs> flat out. <laughs> All right, so that's and that just spawned some fan fiction somewhere. <laughs> there, there's, there's tons of that. <laughs> oh. tons of that. Uh, all right, that's Gene, and and now we have uh, oh gosh, Draco Malfoy. Here we the go. Ferret. All right, Kevin, you're up. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Alrighty, so I gotta say, like, Draco is actually kind of an interesting character. Now, I will say I hated him in, like, the like in the first few books, like, one through three and also in four. But, like, actually, wait, no, it's books one through five, like, I hated him. Like, he was just, he was just a freaking brat, like a spoiled brat who's racist and thinks he's better than everybody else. Like, and he just bullies people. So that's that's one thing, like, I really hate about him. But, like, when we get to the Half-Blood Prince and the Deathly Hallows, we begin to see, like, you know, like, I'm almost getting the impression, like, many of that's just from his, like, his family. Like, you know, he was kind of, like, forced upon it because that's what his family believes in. So, like, I thought that was kind of an interesting thing I got out of. and. I got to say, like, I really liked it how Draco was, like, boasting about, like, you know, he has, like, this important mission to do. But then, like, when he tries to kill Dumbledore, he he does it so poorly because he really doesn't want to do it. Yeah. 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 How about you, Chad? Draco's interesting because, like, when you stop and think about it, it's like... While we can look at what he does is wrong, because it is, I mean, bullying's never a good thing, it's never the right way of doing things, 
but at the same time, it's like I see a lot of people in the Harry Potter community, it seems, just automatically write him off because of it and just be like, you know, he was a dick. Screw him. It's like, what? Nobody makes mistakes when they're a teenager. We are allowed to make mistakes at that age and we can learn from it and we can move on from it and we can redeem ourselves with with stuff like that. So it's, I think we've talked about it before. While the three of them will never probably be friends with Draco, they could probably still make amends and respectfully move on and like respect each other from a distance. We never got to see it. Um, but yeah, I mean, overall, yeah, he was a bully. He was in the wrong. He was raised by basically racist parents and it translated to their son. So it's like, while we are responsible for our own actions, he was also raised in an environment like that. And upon getting further and further into his school years, you're seeing more and more that Draco is a coward and he doesn't want to do what he's doing. He's, he's a lot more, yeah, I can kill Dumbledore. It won't be a problem. And then when the time is to do it is there, he can't do it because that's just not who he is. He can, he can run his mouth all day long, but he can't actually do everything he says he's going to do. So I think he's a lot deeper of a character than people give him credit for. And I'll say it again, you got to remember the age that all these characters are. He's not a grown man set in his ways for the rest of his life. He's a teenager who's still growing and learning and coming into his own. All right, Erica, you're up. Okay, so my feelings on Draco Malfoy is that he is, he's a little shithead bully in the books. I as someone who went through very, really bad childhood bullying, I hate him so much because he, he just says all this random, this, he just, he doesn't think before he says anything. And I know he's a kid. I understand that. But the, the level that it went to was just atrocious. And he, like, literally, we're meant to hate this character. J.K. Rowling said so. She said she's. it's actually concerning how many girls are infatuated by him because we're meant to hate him. He, my big, big, big thing that I will never, I will always hate this character is writing the Weasley's Our King song in Order of the Phoenix. Oh, yeah. I, like, literally, I'm just going to say this for everyone. Paint, I'm going to paint this picture. So imagine being humiliated in front of the entire school and having it happen again and again at every single, like that they, they started singing it at the first Quidditch match against Slytherin. And then the Slytherins kept singing that song at every single Gryffindor um, Quidditch match for the rest of the school year. He had to listen to that song over and over and over and over again. Can you like going through something like that, just, annihilates all of your self-confidence and all of your self-worth and when people go and say something like oh I don't like Ron because he's so insecure and it's like if you went through that kind of bullying when you were 15 you would be so insecure as well and I I get so defensive when people talk about this in in the like there is more there is more hate for Ron in this fandom than there is for Draco Ferret Malfoy um. and that part, that's part that, that's the part that bothers me. Like, in regards to fan fiction, he is glorified and turned into this, like, character who's, like, all good. And then I, one relationship. All right, here we go. Do you want, yeah, okay. Yeah, no, you know, you, first, you fire. Hate, <laughs> I absolutely hate the pairing of Draco Malfoy and Hermione Granger. Um, I hate it. I want it to go away and never ever look at it or see it ever again because in so many of these fan fictions there's so much Ron bashing and, and you want to know something that's ironic. So when I was first figuring out how I started reading fan fiction and figuring out who I liked and didn't like, I was just kind of reading any story that was interesting and any pairing. And you want to know something? In, yeah. in so many Dramini stories, Draco is essentially canon Ron. 
That's how they write mm. him. They write all of the all of the wrong characteristics that I love, and they give them to Draco. And then and then there's all these fan fictions of basically where like Ron abuses Hermione or cheats on her, and then and then she she goes running into the ferret's arms and he saves her. And it's like literally if the rules were reversed and the like that I I hate that so much and I hate that people when people love Draco and bash Ron, it it hurts me and it triggers bad feelings because literally he humiliated him. And that song, the Weasley's Our King song, is a huge part of how insecure Ron was because after Order of the Phoenix, we really, really start to see how insecure he is and how he never feels like he's good enough. And that song was a huge part of it. And I will never, ever, ever be able to forgive Draco Ferret Malfoy for doing that to him because he's my favorite character and I get really tired of the fandom just over glorifying him over glorifying Draco Malfoy and he I mean I think definitely like I hated him less in Half-Blood Prince because he wasn't really being as much of a dickhead to everyone um and I I you know I didn't particularly like him in Deathly Hallows. The only part that I liked about him in Deathly Hallows was when Ron punched him in the face. (laughs) That was the best moment when I saw that. I was like, yes, Ron deserved to punch him in the face. (laughs) Um, And I, I mean, I definitely think that there's different parts and sides to him. And I think he's, it's possible for him to redeem himself, but I, I don't think, Hermione would never ever be with with someone like that and and one of the excuses for it is like oh he's so intelligent and I was like so even if he was intelligent he still treated her like trash and was racist to her wished that she died watched her get tortured like she this it's not her even if (laughs) Hermione would never want to be interested in helping him get better The Hermione that I know in canon would never be with someone like Draco Malfoy. And I hate when people have it where she leaves Ron and goes to Draco Malfoy. And I, Hermione is a a, a fan fiction ship that I hate more than anything. Anyways, that is my rant. Mm -hmm. Sorry, that went really long. (laughs) Yeah, I'll keep I'll keep it short. Dude was a dick. He was a bully. Didn't make any sense for him to be to be in a relationship with the trio after. I mean, like, do I agree with Kevin and Chad that he could have redeemed himself and that he was a kid and that, yeah, yes, I do. Uh, it's partly because also the Malfoys were not the best at being parents. They were dicks also. Like, Lucius was a dick. Narcissa was fine from what I saw of her. Uh, he, had, he had a little redemption at the end there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, Draco... Could have redeemed himself in the future, but I don't see him at all hanging out with the trio. Like, I don't see him being a part of it because, in my opinion, he just did too much. The damage he did to all three of them was just too much that I don't think that they would ever, ever, ever be friends with him. So, yeah, that's my opinion on him. All right. So, we have time for, I'd say, two more. Dumbledore and Snape. That's, okay. Yeah. So, Kevin, your opinion on Dumbledore? Um, Dumbledore. Um, I really like the whole like wise person kind of thing. Like, I guess I just like it when uh, you know, the the mentor. Like, I really like that aspect in um, uh, you know, many stories. But I also like it how he's kind of like Harry described him like this in the books, where like Dumbledore almost seemed like a young man in the old in old person's body. Like, I felt like that was kind of like a good. Uh, idea of what of the kind of person Dumbledore was like I really liked it how you know he just has fun almost like I don't know why like like as being a professor or like headmaster so I really liked that aspect of him and I also another aspect that I liked is where we see like he may be very wise you know he may seem like he could do no wrong but in the Deathly Hallows we see how you know he he is flawed 
like we see how you know he he worked with uh Geller Grindelwald you know and then Grindelwald will become like one of the most feared wizards ever so we do see how Dumbledore isn't very perfect and you know he did one, at one point crave power so I thought that was a very interesting uh thing that they looked upon in the Deathly Hallows and I like it does show like you know he he is flawed but he, but through his mistakes he became very wise. Mm, that's that, that's a very good analysis. How about you, Chad? Your opinion on Dumbledore? Uh, I like the character. I think um, what we got in the books, I guess, was enough. I almost wish they'd maybe written some more books at another point um, describing more of him instead of... Um, I, I, I don't know. I mean, I like the character. They just, it's just, uh, I, I don't know. It was also switching of the actors after movie one and two to Michael Gambon. Obviously that had to happen because the original actor passed away, but it was just the, uh, especially in the movies, the, the way Dumbledore was portrayed was so different between the two actors that it almost felt like an entirely new character. Um, but I mean, yeah, overall, he's a good character. I think he's smarter than like, he's got that goofy side to him. Like he almost reminds me of like Willy Wonka, the way Willy Wonka was in the yeah. books where he's smart, but like quirky and different, but he also always knew exactly what to do. So yeah, overall good, good character. Um, probably my favorite thing in all seven of the books with him was his explanation for everything after the Department of Mysteries battle, that mm -hmm. final chapter with him and Harry when they were discussing everything. That was probably my favorite Dumbledore moment out of the entire franchise. I wholeheartedly agree with that. I like that moment too. That um, the, the thing that King, King's Cross for me comes close second. Um, how, about, how about you, uh, Erica? Are, are, any opinions on Dumbledore? Yeah, I think I like Dumbledore a lot. I think he's a he's a good character. He's very wise, and he's got that quirky sort of silly side to him too. And um, I really like the growing friendship that he gets with Harry. And um, I think that he he's great. I don't really have anything that I don't like about him. I, I mean, I really like the fact that you know we got to see his his weaknesses too towards the end um and i think that's uh that's really good and i yeah dumbledore is cool i like dumbledore me um i like dumbledore's really a complex character because in my opinion i like what jk ryan wrote uh in the first six books you get the feeling of of like oh this guy's like you know kind of he's he's sweet he's a nice sweet man but and you know and he's a very good Obi Wan Kenobi style mentor but you know it, you learn in Deathly Hallows part Deathly Hallows that you know, the guy did some dark stuff and it just shows that not no no one in HP is perfect you know there's no he, there's no one who's absolutely good absolutely evil like even Voldemort to touch him on a bit like he he was evil yeah but he had he had um, he was, I pity his past because he was born through a love potion. You know, he, he was born in the absence of love. So that's why he's like that. So like in Dumbledore's case, like he, like to, to agree with what Kevin said, he quested for power. He wanted power, but in the end, he realized that it wasn't for him. And what people got hurt, Ariana got killed. So I like the fact that he regretted his actions and that he just fell to becoming a teacher, the headmaster of Hogwarts. So yeah. All right, so one last, and I think um, to wrap this up, we'll go with the last one that, that everyone has strong opinions about, uh, Severus Snape. Uh, Kevin, so what do you what do you think on Ke Severus Snape, Kevin? Like, I think Severus Snape, like, behind Harry, like, he is probably my second favorite character in the Harry Potter saga because, like, of how complex he really is. Like, I remember writing about him in, like, an English uh, project or something, and I had a lot to say about him. Like, that's, like, that's how complex he was for me because, like, you know, we we see him as, he was kind of almost like the red herring in the series. Like, like most of the time, like, the golden trio, or at least 
mostly Ron most of the time, they would see him as like, he's probably doing something evil, you know, cause like how he's kind of a jerk to everybody, you know, he's always so, he always, bully. Like, we get it. Yeah. He was a bully and he always looks so miserable. So, and he enjoys like, you know, like basically uh, making his students' lives mis- miserable. So like, he was just pretty bad. But then, uh, but then as, I think this is around Deathly Hallows is when we start to see that, you know, there was a different side to him, you know, like, like, yes, he was a bad person, but like, he also was, you know, pretty brave. Like he was so brave. He was willing to risk his entire life because of uh, his love for Lily. Like he, he was willing to die and, you know, he did die. So like, I really thought that was, like, a very interesting thing they did with his character. Like, he was a bad person, but he was also a good person, like, as well. So that is basically the definition of a great character for, for my eyes. All right, how about you, Chad? Uh, your opinions on Snape? Uh, I mean, there's not really much I can add, short of everything that's already either been said or is common knowledge about the character. My only opinion on him is he's a very well written character. Uh, J.K. Rowling did, I think, I think she did a great job setting up everything, his backstory, uh, waiting until the very end to reveal it all. They did a good job, and Alan Rickman was the perfect choice for him in the movies. Amazing. Yes, amazing job. Amazing, amazing actor to, to play. And rest in peace, actor yeah. Alan. Uh, how about you, Erica? Snape is a character that, like, a, I love him, but I hate him in that, like, he he was a bully. He was really cruel to a lot of the Gryffindors and played favorites with the Slytherins, of course. But I think that's how he was supposed to be written. Um, and, you know, I, I don't I don't blame him. Again, like, as someone who went through really bad bullying, James was really horrible to him. Um, and he, I mean, I can't imagine having to, having so many mixed feelings with regards to Harry in that, like, he was in love with his mother, but hated his father. So it was one of those things where it's like, he, he had to protect Harry, but he, he also hated part of it. Like, I don't think he didn't want to protect Harry. I think it was just a major thing of conflict. And like, when it came down to it, he protected Harry. Right. And I, you know, a lot of people hate the character, but I think you're supposed to hate the character. And then once you see the ending, you're kind of going to be like, I hate him, but I understand him more. And I think that he, I like Snape. Um, I, I like him in the end. I don't like him throughout the books, but I, once you, once you find out, that he was good all along you sort of if you go back and reread the series you understand some of the points and parts that he made in regards to that so that's how i feel about snape yeah that's great so um my opinion on snape again like what erica said really complex i don't like i don't agree with his bullying i can understand why why he comes from that because he feels like his worst enemy, his worst bully, married married Lily, the love of his life. So I, I get why he was salty. But in my opinion, he shouldn't have bullied Harry that much. Or not even at all, because it's not Harry's fault he was born. I, by the end of that house, I understood him more. But uh, I'm very split on what he did. He brought to the table. I don't recommend, though, fantastic actor. And may he rest in peace for what he brought, brought to the role. So that's it, guys. We covered the main cast of HP. So thank you for listening to this special big week episode. Uh, um, thank um, I, it's it's been really great. So uh, would you guys want to sign off? This is Santino signing off. This is Kevin signing off as well. Yeah. And don't forget to check out my channel, the yeah. KFC. This is uh, this is Erica signing off. It's been really great joining in on this podcast. It's been really fun, and uh, I might come in again for other fandoms. We'll see. Guys, thanks for listening in today. It was a lot of fun. I'm hope you're enjoying Harry Potter month. We have two episodes left after this, and then Harry Potter is done for a while. 
So guys, enjoy your day. Thanks for listening in. Share it around. Tell your friends. Do whatever you want. We just hope you enjoy it. If there's any criticism you want to give, ideas, put them down below. Let us know. The only way we can improve is if you tell us what you want to hear. All right. Bye, guys.